and see that matters. Because in most of the cases, what happens is once the energy saving is achieved, uh, it's celebrated and then that's it. No, that should not be the case. So I just repeat uh, all the eight sessions. So the first session uh, was with uh, defining baseline and ideation. The second one was on finalizing project. Third one was on financing of energy efficiency projects. Fourth one, procurement. Fifth, implementation. Sixth, daily and monthly monitoring and verification of savings. And seventh, today, we will see operation and maintenance of energy saving projects. And then uh, the last one would be uh, the summary and key takeaways. All this is learning. Uh, even after uh, having done 10 years of successful energy performance contracting, uh, believe us uh, that uh, we are learning every day, and that's the key. Uh, friends, let's quickly go through uh, the learning of all the sessions because uh, many have not uh, uh, attended all the sessions. Uh, so, for their benefit, uh, let us quickly go through that. Right. So, basically, energy saving is a difference of two numbers. Right. Two numbers means what was the energy cost or energy consumption before implementation of the project and then what is now. So difference of these two numbers. So how do we go about it? So the existing number is called as the baseline. Like if the project would not have been implemented, then what would have been the energy consumption? What would have been the energy cost? So that is called as your baseline, right? And right definition of baseline is success to your project, right? Because your equipments are functioning right now, whether it is production purpose or whatever kind of service you want, right? Whether it is a HVAC system or hot water system or boiler, right? Or thermic fluid heater, that all purpose is being served, right? So it's only the energy cost that should go down. And that is what is expected out of your project. So past cost is your baseline and that has to be defined very clearly, right? And on that baseline, all the stakeholders must agree, right? That is important. And despite we can have as much detailing as possible, we have experienced that keeping it simple helps in the long run, right? And there has to be transparency from all the sides, whether client, whether OEM or ESCO, that helps. A clear cut documentation always helps, right? Now, right, right diagnosis has a very good advantage that it immediately results into right diagnosis, right? That means if you are trying to define some specific energy consumption level or energy consumption per day or energy consumption um, per unit of production, it gives you some feeling like what's, uh, is it right, is it not right? So that's uh, the value addition towards diagnosis, right? And right diagnosis is always important for right ideation. Right ideation here means that right identification of energy saving project. And friends, always remember energy saving is a long-term phenomenon, right? So this is the outcome of an actual uh, project wherein the green uh, line indicates the uh, energy cost uh, before implementation of the project. And then the blue line indicates the energy cost after implementation of the project. Now it makes it very clear that we cannot have one average baseline for all the months, right? We need to have 12 different baselines, right? For 12 different months, right? Then you can quantify the savings very correctly, right? And all the saving projects will not be giving you equal savings in all the months that happens. Right. So expectation from energy efficiency is always the difference between two numbers. The first one is baseline and the second one is outcome of your ideation. Always remember this. Let's quickly move uh, to the next. Once the baseline is done, then the next is ideation. Ideation means which energy conservation projects you are finally going to implement. Right. And let the ideation be as many as possible. Let the ideation be as many projects one can think of. Right. Then there is a selection step which is performed later on. And this uh, detailing first diverging and then converging. That kind of approach uh, is what we follow, right? And that has helped us a lot because uh, even if uh, two facilities might be exactly similar, the equipments might be exactly similar, but there, there, is, there are at least two, three different projects which are absolutely site specific. And uh, to us, we have seen that they have helped us a lot to maximize the savings. So these are plenty of them. So let, let them be, right? And they will come from different people, right? Uh, from the team. Now, once there are so many ideations, right? Then we have to finalize that, right? When we are trying to finalize, let every project compete with every project, right? Because it's not about this technology or that technology, because every technology would mean rupees invested and rupees saved, right? And rupees invested versus JJ emissions saved. 
right? So that is one common parameter on which all the projects actually compete, right? And that is why we strongly recommend that once the ideation is done, then the finalization uh, process should have some common parameters to compare all of them, right? It is like this, that there are plenty of medicines in a medical shop. So same way there are umpteen number of energy saving projects which are possible in any facility, right? But a good doctor would always prescribe a very few uh, medicine based on their diagnosis. So that is the job uh, ESCO does because it's the outcome that matters. And that's why uh, a service-based ESCO would normally identify projects which are completely technology independent, which are completely, uh, I mean, there is absolutely no bias in selection of the project because it is completely ROI based selection, right? Then the important part is uh, financing. It is very important, right? So every um, case is a different case, right? And uh, uh, source of financing, many times uh, customers are willing to finance, many times uh, customers are not willing to finance. Sometimes uh, OEM uh, is trying to provide some support. Sometimes there is some bank which is leading uh, certain activity, right? So uh, somehow this becomes a very, very uh, case specific phenomenon. But this has to be solved. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what not level of energy efficiency project you have identified. Um, if you are not overcoming uh, the financing issue, the project will never be implemented, right? So how do you overcome uh, financing aspect of any energy saving project is important. Right. It's not necessary that ESCOs would always be investing. It's not necessary that customers will always be investing. But this, who will be investing, right? This uh, has to be solved, right? And that is why uh, we have also seen that when there, is, there are no budgets available, even in that situation, a good energy efficiency project can be evolved and can be implemented. Now, comes the procurement part, right? Uh, the procurement is much beyond the normal purchase uh, phenomena. And whosoever is taking the responsibility to deliver the savings, right, uh, should be doing the procurement part. That is where we have seen that things are very important, right? So we also believe in uh, having finally a single project leader for every single project, right? Who takes up the responsibility of coming up with the outcome, right? And then does everything. Right. Then the implementation part, right? So implementation part would involve everything again put together, right? Means all the aspects, uh, re, re uh, see, recheck the baseline, right? The energy conservation ideas, finalization of project, right? It, it is a final check before you are making actual uh, investments, right? Or before customers are making actual investments, right? Uh, getting the finance, procurement, implementation, monitoring savings, uh, corrective actions, and handling failures, right? All these aspects are very, very important to uh, review it just before the implementation, right? And that's where uh, ESCOs uh, have done far, far better, right? Then once the project is implemented, daily monitoring and monthly monitoring and verification of important parameters is very, very important because the purpose of the project is to achieve the savings, right? So whether that is happening or not, and if it is happening, then whether all those performance parameters are falling in place or not, or if it is not happening, then those performance parameters will give us a clue what is going wrong. So a good m &B plan is like a good pathology report, right? And it helps in uh, diagnosis uh, that what additionally needs to be done or what is being done is still not effective. So this is something uh, very, very important and it has to be done on a, a continual basis. Friends, let's uh, review the uh, project implementation process. So this is the seven step process which we uh, follow very closely, right? And we, we always tell uh, our customers that you take a call from 5% to 30%, right? It is possible in every plant, it may not be possible 5% to 30%, but whatever range that is possible in a particular plant, we give them. And then we ask customers to choose those kind of saving levels. Because the moment saving levels are chosen, uh, the uh, projects which are going to be implemented, that also changes, right? We always suggest uh, every customer that you identify your partner for implementation of an energy efficiency project. It's important, right? 
um, then identify energy efficiency projects with their uh, investment and ROI and let all the energy efficiency project compete with each other. Right. And finally, who is going to bell the cat? Right. Means who is going to take the responsibility has to take uh, the call. Right. Should be given all the authority, all the responsibility to take the call. Then and only then it works. Right. Then once the project is implemented, monitor all the progress, monitor all the parameters and let all these parameters be predefined right since the beginning of the project. And before implementation of the project, if you have all those parameters monitored and the moment you implement the project and again you monitor all those parameters, you can clearly see the difference. See, savings are outcome, right? If you are getting the savings, you will not know why you are getting the savings. Or if you are not getting the savings, if you monitor only savings, you will not know why is that you are getting it and why is that you are not getting it. But there are several performance parameters which are very important with every energy saving project. If they are monitored, then you correctly understand that what's going wrong and that's where you can take the uh, corrective actions, right? And then uh, the seventh step, which is very important that uh, the progress of energy efficiency project has to be communicated to all the stakeholders. Friends, let's quickly come to uh, today's topic and let's give a lot of time to this, right? Um, so we have said uh, with each of the session, we have tried to come up with one tagline, right? So in case of O&M, we believe in that it's the consistency that matters. Whatever plans you have, whatever parameters you are monitoring, whichever way you are handling the project, that has to be done every day, every week, every month, right? So how we are going to uh, see today's session? is basically uh, six different uh, aspects. Out of that, uh, the first three are completely focused on the uh, O&M. And that's where we will spend most of the time, right? So first of all, what is the strategy that is needed, right, uh, for operation and maintenance? Why is that uh, once the energy efficiency project is implemented, it will perform? Normally, that is the that is the thing, thinking, right? Uh, friends, let me tell you, even LED lights, right? Uh, do not perform that way, right? They fail uh, quite a lot in between, right? Or their color shade will fade, right? Uh, so a five-star hotel or anywhere uh, wherein the color rendering index is important or the color is important, uh, there, there will be complaints. So even if you are getting the savings, uh, you need to have that strategy, right? Then definitely all other projects, right, have, have much and uh, higher uh, number of variables. Uh, which needs to be taken care of and that's why o and uh, of any energy uh, performance contract or any energy saving uh, project is very very important right so what we uh, call it as that it has to be performance based uh, o &M. we will see it in detail as we go inside right then uh, we have tried to come up with some very specific uh, operation and maintenance goals right i mean what is to be done when we say operation and maintenance then what is to be done and why is that to be done right so depending on different project to project, the specific goals of OM will vary, right? But whatsoever is decided once, right? It's the consistency and only the consistency that matters, right? Because uh, what happens is uh, good savings keep coming and then uh, we start feeling that everything is all right. Then why to, why to keep spending on OM, right? But that's exactly uh, the problem starts coming in. We will see that in detail. Then um, we have come up with five different uh, uh, case studies to highlight the importance of OM of energy saving project. We will discuss that. And then uh, some of the new initiatives, uh, what uh, we have taken up, uh, we will discuss that, right? Along with some uh, energy efficiency projects uh, and, and how uh, we have uh, presented the cash flows uh, to the management, wherein the decision making. Uh, from the management or uh, with any financial uh, institute that happens much uh, smoother and much faster. So let's see that. Right? So friends, normally what we have seen, we have seen uh, breakdown maintenance and then we have seen predictive maintenance, right? So breakdown is like uh, something has gone wrong and then the corrective or the reactive action that is being taken up. So that is what is called as breakdown maintenance. And uh, the initial era of industrialization was on breakdown maintenance. Then it improved further and then it said that there should not be breakdowns, right? And uh, how the breakdowns can be avoided. So that was with predictive maintenance that uh, on timelines, uh, what are all those maintenance activities that have to be done? That will be a predictive maintenance. It, it is something like a certain days of your uh, car 
right has passed so after that you require this kind of maintenance right whether car is giving you any problem or not but car requires that kind of a maintenance but friends let me tell you very clearly that both of these maintenance kind of activities are not sufficient for energy performance contract because none of it talks about performance right uh, breakdown maintenance is anyway i mean some breakdown has happened then that corrective action is taken repair action is taken whereas predictive maintenance will not uh, let breakdown to happen but that, that's what is the maximum focus of a predictive maintenance uh, philosophy so what is the kind of fundamental philosophy that is needed so that is needed performance based maintenance performance based maintenance means uh, energy saving projects performance would mean that i must get savings this much or more than this but never less than this right so that is the performance of a energy saving project right because equipment will function right a chiller will keep on giving you uh, air conditioning right without any complaint right but that's not the performance the performance is that how much of uh, kw per tr my chiller should be consuming how much of kwh consumption should be there on a particular month right how much of kwh consumption should be there on on a particular month with a particular kind of occupancy right so this can be in great details right so what we say and what we believe is uh, one name of energy efficiency project is its primary aim is at maximizing savings right and that is why we always say that uh, it must be uh, performance based uh, ondm and precisely this was the reason uh, when we did our energy performance contract we decided that we will man over all the key sites i'll will share that uh, uh, in detail right now let's first see uh, that uh, goals right because there is there is a function operation and maintenance right it it looks very similar or very uh, routine kind of a thing right but what happens is this numbers and savings keep varying right some days we get more savings some day we get less savings so the moment we are getting more or less savings there has to be a detail analysis why right uh, because the more and more you understand the uh, savings so that gives you better understanding of the parameters which are actually affecting your site right and this cannot be done from a distance we have seen that we we did install uh, iot based we also have some of our own iot based technologies right but uh, a good uh, uh, conclusion a good diagnosis uh, can only be done uh, by by applying subject knowledge to it and that can only be done uh, through uh, man people right and that cost of additional manpower right is definitely uh, recovered right by enhancement of the savings and that is what has been our uh, experience right so uh, the goals are uh, protect the equipment and maintain the savings improve efficiency improve performance uh, friends many times we have seen that um, uh, like for example if you have done a Uh, automation using a variable frequency drive so at certain parameters uh, the speed of the drive will change in a certain way right so this is the philosophy which has been uh, decided before actually implementation of the project and then the project is implemented but friends what happens is uh, seasons changes uh, product changes right um, the control parameters changes so with that there is a change that is needed in this uh, settings also right though you are getting the savings though you are getting the predicted savings claim savings but it can always be enhanced and that is where the job of uh, operation and maintenance becomes very very important and and we have, we, have, we have seen that that it delivers right we'll see that uh, so the another important part is that promote awareness and accountability it it is very very important right Uh, because what happens is uh, it it improves the status of an energy efficiency project in any organization a good one and right because it is that which is functioning right selection of the project strategy financing all the key things have happened right so one of its job is that they should be promoting awareness and accountability uh, towards uh, uh, energy conservation then of course reduce downtime and failures right uh, increase uh, plan Uh, to unplanned uh, maintenance ratio right and uh, improve safety right the picture clearly explains everything uh, in terms of role of uh, ondm right so uh, here the learning has been ondm is a important factor in ensuring and maintaining the quality and life of equipment which assures long term and sustained performance of equipment for better results right 
friends it's, it's a heavy line but uh, this is what um, we have seen that uh, it results into now let me begin with the actual case study there was a diesel fired boiler at a uh, facility right now what happens is uh, basically for steam and hot water application right uh, basically uh, there will be hot water requirement but this requirement will be more during morning and during evening right uh, so there, there is a schedule for requirement whereas the uh, operational parameter is like this that when uh, the temperature is reduced right then the heating starts right and if the pressure drops then the uh, boiler starts firing right or the temperature drops then the boiler starts firing so this kind of an automation right uh, has been made to uh, see to it that the equipment operates and delivers the required function right but this kind of set of operations friends believe me is not the best of the thing uh, to uh, ensure uh, minimum uh, energy consumption to ensure minimum energy cost right so we evolve uh, at a at a operational philosophy right how uh, equipment should operate right uh, and and we link it with the actual consumption so this automation philosophy is altered right a lot of corrective actions are taken right and uh, in some of the cases uh, even the operating manpower right they do it manually right so issue is not important whether you are doing it manually or you are doing it through uh, technology right but the point is that you should get the outcome uh, through it right so uh, this is the case wherein uh, before implementation of a project a lot of uh, operational improvement uh, measures were taken up so they gave result then there was investment done in a technology that gave some results right and even after actual implementation of the project right the team realized that that there is still something more can be done so that we identify it as a service so this is the actual uh, outcome of a uh, uh, project right and uh, that is why we strongly say that operation and maintenance will itself pay you and when and when i am saying operation and maintenance it is the class of the operation and maintenance which is which is required for energy performance contract unfortunately in most of the cases we have seen that that this function is uh, outsourced right in, in in particularly in case of uh, uh, industry it's fine that the industry uh, maintains their own set of team right but most of the commercial buildings we have seen that that this is the outsourced to a facility management uh, setup right wherein the fundamental knowledge right as far as the performance of the equipment is concerned is not there right and uh, and that is why uh, though the equipment functions right uh, it, it delivers uh, the purpose right but at what cost right so that's where a phenomenal amount of uh, uh, opportunity that exists and and friends that comes from the subject right so uh, our understanding is that that uh, we keep a very strong uh, uh, percentage of our overall project cost uh, for operation and maintenance right because project implementation will happen at the very initial phase whereas the project would normally be for a period of minimum 2 years to as high as 5 years right so so for 2 to 5 years how is your equipment performing right if that is taken a proper care right then more than what has been invested on uh, o&m uh, it, it it gives additional uh, uh, savings at least uh, 2 to 4 times more that's what we have observed friends uh, these are these are some of the projects right wherein uh, the it, it is self explanatory right because some of the cases uh, the uh, energy efficient uh, air conditioners have been installed but not proper maintenance is done right and outdoor unit is corroding it's it's getting uh, filled with dust with dirt right so it doesn't matter what not uh, Uh, original uh, energy efficient equipment you have installed but they are not going to perform if your operation and maintenance is poor right so even for uh, energy efficient equipment installation because what happens is these these kind of things are not seen right they, they are on your rooftop right and and some of the cases if it is on your uh, vertical wall projected then we will not be able to even sense it whether they are dirty or whether they are not dirty right Uh, so so the places of their installation right is is also very important because access to maintenance is becomes becomes very key to it right so uh, we have seen very clearly that the uh, if the operation and maintenance of uh, very good energy efficient equipment uh, is not done properly uh, friends believe me it is not going to give you the performance what it is meant for right 
So good uh, energy efficient equipment is not a one time phenomena that once we install it and then forget it. It's not. It's good to talk about it. It's good to hear about it. Right. But but it is like that, that uh, you own a good car, but you have to do a good driving at every moment of it. Right. You can't say that that for one minute I can sleep. Right. Or for few seconds, I can avoid my attention on the road. It is not possible. Right. So same way, operation and maintenance of energy efficient project is, is something like it, it goes in hand in hand with uh, the time. Right. Let's take another case with some uh, actual numbers. Right. Normally, what happens is uh, even if we uh, install a uh, higher energy efficient chiller, right, uh, the proper uh, uh, cleaning of condenser tubes is very, very important. Now, there is always a debate like what should be the frequency, right? Some uh, would say that, and, and OEM would rather uh, prefer to uh, prescribe it. You do it every two months, you do it every three months, or you do it every six months, like that, right? Whereas, these are the parameters, right? These are the numbers which tell us very clearly that what kind of a maintenance activity needs to be done, right? So in this uh, particular case, right, there was a recycled water which has, which is which was being used, right? That is also a right activity to save water. But in a recycled water, your TDS uh, uh, involvement is very high, right? And um, uh, therefore, uh, the condenser inlet temperature it it went up to uh, twenty six point three right uh, the condenser outlet temperature right after taking the heat it gets heated so uh, it is around 32 right whereas uh, refrigeration condensing temperature was 38.5 right condenser approach was 6.7 so high right and then uh, the compressor discharge pressure was also uh, higher that was 877 right and uh, that's why the loading of the uh, chiller compressor that was also uh, higher that was 68 percent now, after cleaning, one can clearly see the difference. The 26.3 comes out to 25.2. The condenser outlet temperature uh, uh, comes down from 31.8 to 28.6. Right, refrigeration condensing temperature right uh, comes down from 28.5 to uh, 32.9. Obviously, this means that the compressor discharge pressure will come down, and that has come down from 877 to uh, 733. Right. And uh, the condenser approach, even even this 4.2 is high, but from earlier uh, point of 6.7, it has come down to 4.2, which which requires a further study, which requires a further investigation, right? But but these are the numbers which are going to actually uh, decide your course of action, and that is why we call it as a uh, the job is uh, of O and M of energy efficiency project is actually uh, managing the performance. So. The, the difference in energy consumption, right, in both of the cases is, is uh, very, very uh, obvious, right? Whereas the equipment will perform, right? Ch ch chiller is not giving any problem, right, even before condenser cleaning, right? Because that much of margin is there, right? But it keeps on consuming higher energy, right? And it's very difficult to, um, uh, to keep, keep a track unless and until there is a deliberate attempt to see the difference before and after, right? In many of the cases, we have seen that there is a very good practice of uh, maintaining log sheet that is done, right? But since those numbers are coming every day in front of our eyes, right? Uh, most of the time, I have seen that that uh, people are, though they are maintaining it, but they are not interpreting it or they are not taking the action based on that, right? In some of the cases, uh, uh, like uh, uh, condenser is giving good performance, but just because the action is there that that every quarter it should be done and down the time has come right uh, amc is given so it is done right whereas in some of the cases uh, uh, even after one or two months right because of the water quality the performance is going down but no no, no. the schedule and the sanctioned pr uh, project or the sanctioned uh, schedule of activity in amc is planned as every quarter so it is being done every quarter so so that affects your your energy cost in a big big way and that is why uh, we we stick it to that it has to be performance based uh, uh, O and M, and it has helped us a lot. And this is how uh, I'll explain you the, how it has helped us. In our actual energy saving project, uh, the blue line indicates the first year of energy savings. Right, once you have implemented the energy saving, so different twelve months you are getting uh, savings right from it, and you are monitoring it, and you have achieved your targeted savings. You are happy about it. Everything is fine, right? But then what happens is the OM team has spent one year at the site, right? Obviously, the knowledge of the OM team, right, is much better, 
right? Then the Salji team, which, which has first identified and worked on the project and identified some things, right? So they also keep on identifying something more, identifying and doing something more, right? And then the red line is the uh, actual uh, savings which we have achieved, right? Uh, from, from the same side, right? In in the next year, right? So this is what uh, clearly explains the importance of OEM of any uh, uh, energy saving project. Of course, uh, the layout has to be bigger, right? Which which justifies additional investment on OEM. But any any project wherein uh, the monthly savings are uh, more than five lakh, right? We see to it that that we physically manage, right? We may not manage every three years, every three shift, right? Like for example, if the savings are more than ten lakhs, then we manage every every three shifts, right? So like this, we have we evolve. Uh, Certain things, right? Sometimes we changes these things also. At some locations, we manage in two shifts also, right? In some cases, we put four people, right? But then the objective is that there is a need for it, right? And it's not a sacrosanct kind of a thing like this is how it is needed, so this is how it is, right? One time is very very specific to every specific site, and then there can be very non technical kind of reasons also, right? But that's okay, right? Till it is giving us result, it, it's it's perfectly fine uh, to keep doing it. Friends, whatsoever questions you have, please keep writing on the uh, question box. We will take all of them uh, at the end of the session, right? And uh, that's why we give very good importance to O and M in our all the uh, energy performance contracts. Let's see uh, some of the actual uh, cases. So uh, this is the plastic industry wherein uh, uh, the preforms are made. Where then uh, you do blow molding and then you get the water bottles, right? And these water bottle consumption is in huge in numbers in the country, right? So here the heating, right? Because it's an injection uh, blow molding uh, kind of a facility, right? So there um, the heating is required. So here we had uh, proposed uh, the electrical heating to be replaced by biomass fired thermic fluid heating, right? It, it required a lot of changes, right? But finally, what I want to emphasize here is that the project is planned in such a way that uh, right uh, after the implementation of the project, right? It should give the net positive cash flow. Right, like for example, here if you see monthly savings are 5.75 lakhs, right? The third point, right? Whereas the monthly EMI to be paid, right, is is 3.85 uh, lakhs. So actually, you are getting 1.9 lakhs of positive cash flow, right? And this kind of financing is possible today. So I suppose would bring that kind of a financing, and uh, customers uh, uh, would have to take that kind of. Uh, uh, financing, whereas the ESCOs would, would maintain uh, the performance of the uh, equipment and performance of the project, right? So that's how uh, energy efficiency projects uh, can be actually scaled up. Another very good technology of uh, evaporative condenser, right? Uh, uh, it, ha it has got a phenomenal uh, uh, potential. Even we have seen that in case of a water cooled condenser also, evaporative condenser has saved uh, uh, pumping power, right, and it has given uh, very good savings. But here also we have structured the project in such a way that uh, monthly savings are around ninety thousand, whereas the monthly EMI uh, stands out to be fifty-eight point five thousand, right. So there is a net positive cash flow. So now what happens is uh, if, if the energy efficiency projects are planned in this way, right, then it actually gives net positive cash flow to the uh, customers, and that's where we have seen that customers are taking a lot of interest. Right, and that is the value which uh, field of energy efficiency can provide uh, to a customer. And there is no end to technology. Technologies are phenomenal, and they are plenty. Right, this is another project wherein um, air conditioning has been planned in a modified way. Right, because the facility was quite large, the uh, chill water was being circulated in in a very long area, large area, whereas the application was not for 24 hours. Right. So there were several case specific uh, issues. So here also we planned the project that the monthly savings be significantly higher than the monthly EMI so that there is a net positive cash flow. So here the monthly saving um, is uh, 3.6 lakhs, whereas the monthly EMI is 2.85 lakhs and the net positive cash flow uh, is around 77,000 uh, to the customer. Right. So when these kind of uh, things are done, the operating cost right for that particular customer is actually getting reduced by seventy-seven thousand. 
every month and that matters a lot to the customer right the concept of payback right is is actually taking a back seat frankly speaking friends i would also like to share some of the programs which we have come up right so this is the energy efficient motor program uh, Energy efficient motor IE4 and IE5, these are available in the country. There are many makes uh, which are uh, providing this. There are established manufacturers and there are very innovative and very courageous startups, right, who have come up with uh, uh, IE5 motors, right. Uh, we, we have installed these motors, we have applied our knowledge of energy efficiency. And what we believe is that around uh, 20 to 40 percent of the motors, right, needs to be changed by energy efficient motor. It can be either IE4 or IE5, right, because every application it's not that the IE4 and IE5 both will fit in, right, because payback has to be there, right. So, in some of the cases, we have found that IE4 is fitting in, some of the cases, we have found that IE5 is fitting in, right, but that's okay, right. It's not, it's not like uh, LED that, that uh, we will change all the lighting into LED, right. Hello, uh, we cannot hear you. I think there is some technical issue at his end. So let's wait uh, for one or two minutes. Uh, kindly bear with us. Audible now? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So what I was uh, referring here is uh, in an energy efficient motor program, these kind of savings are are unusual, right? But unless and until uh, the project is brought down to less than two years, right? For sake of energy efficient motor program, energy efficient motor program will never succeed, right? Because uh, th 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 there is no interest in any technology, right, from customer perspective. Customer wants good ROI, that's it, for any energy efficiency project, right? So it's our task, right, uh, to you to see to it that a particular technology is uh, being made uh, uh, available, is, is, is made fitting into the uh, qualifying criteria of uh, uh, low payback, right? So this is what uh, has been actually achieved. Uh, this was IE4 motor. Right. This is the old motor. This is the new motor. Right. And whenever you are going with I4 or I5 motor, these are actually synchronous motor. Whereas your loads are actually designed for 
uh, 14 uh, 30 14 40 or 1450 rpm kind of thing right so your uh, uh, rpm at load end also changes right so you have to manage that corrections right so all those activities all those responsibilities have to be taken right and it is to be solved in totality not just supply the motor no this is a i5 motor right which is a very very encouraging response because the savings are so huge right what is actually happening is at a very underloaded condition the initial motor was 1.5 kilowatt motor right and um, uh, the actual load was low right uh, it was it was drawing just uh, a 0.4 so it was highly underloaded condition so obviously a standard efficiency motor uh, will will operate at a very very poor efficiency so we felt that when we are trying to replace by a 1.5 kilowatt motor actually a lower kilowatt motor would have also done right but we wanted to check and we wanted to actually uh, see how uh, this i5 motor would perform at such a underloaded situation right so the efficiency drop of these i4 and i5 motors is is not as high as a normal uh, efficiency motor and that's where uh, the savings come up right so these savings are as high as uh, 45% and that's where the payback becomes much faster because the these cost of these equipments are still higher right the another case that this is also i5 motor right initial motor was 2.2 kilowatt right and then uh, we replaced that by a 1.5 kilowatt uh, i5 motor right and savings uh, are really nice right almost 30% of savings right with these kind of savings only uh, you get a, a acceptable payback period now which motors right are going to give you uh, this kind of payback that is the job of an esco it's not like sari motors battle thing no it doesn't work like that right and here we have come up with a guaranteed uh, offering that minimum this much of savings we will offer means minimum savings this much we will offer otherwise we will take back the motor and uh, uh, so customers will not have to bear the cost of any failure that that's what uh, the uh, uh, tagline of our offerings are right then there are several other technologies right um, uh, for energy efficient fans because there is a lot of hvac in, in commercial buildings right so ec fans and plug fans right these two technologies are there right we have been able to brought them to a good payback period kind of a situation right and uh, and we maintain a very good supply uh, chain from all the oems none of these are our manufactured product we do not believe in that right like doctors never have their own medicines right Uh, it is the pharmaceutical company's job to to make uh, good good medicines right but it's doctor's job to do a good diagnosis and and uh, get the patient right right so in hvac we have four technologies right we select them based on the situation but now we are offering them as a program right and then uh, these are high temperature heat pump applications wherein uh, the automobile or pharmaceutical uh, industry right uh, they require uh, uh, hot air right or hot water right particularly like a uh, uh, paint booth uh, section in automobile uh, unit or for drying application in pharmaceutical uh, case we require high temperatures the normal bathing uh, kind of heat pump will not serve the purpose right so these are the uh, some four five technologies uh, we have come up uh, as a program so to proceed further uh, this is how in detail energy performance contract has to be uh, monitored right through a proper uh, uh, o&m uh, approach right so the green color is the baseline and the blue and the uh, reddish color is actually your um, savings in two different years right and these are all actually achieved savings right and this level of monitoring is not possible if you are not having a proper uh, o&m uh, team right at the site and it's working right there are several several technologies friends uh, the field is never uh, limited by uh, the number of technologies right so every industry every industry i can very confidently say that uh, the utility side uh, there are there is at least 20% savings possible and uh, for in a commercial building on a overall consumption uh, there is at least a 20% savings that is possible so these technologies are like auto tube uh, condenser uh, Uh, cleaning system right ec fans we discussed earlier heat pump right for normal and uh, high temperature applications right then dynamic controllers for chiller this is iot based application giving good results right then evaporative condensers right and, and most of these technologies are coming from good uh, oems good and well known oems 
right but at the same time uh, startups are uh, doing very innovative work right and uh, here like uh, this iot based controller that definitely comes from a startup and it, it is giving good results right then uh, cti approved cooling tower uh, in some of the applications we have seen that it has performed very well and we have gone for it right and then um, in some of the cases uh, we we have cut on the uh, complete uh, steam network right and then uh, we have provided location based uh, steam generation and that has given very good performance in case of batch uh, applications right then uh, servo stabilizers right sounds very odd because uh, electricity conditions are continuously improving but there are still certain areas wherein the voltage fluctuations are still very high right and uh, there we have seen that uh, installing servo stabilizer has given good savings right there cannot be a fixed kind of thing right with this technology you are going to get this much of savings no because uh, this is the technology performance but that means we are assuming baseline right but the baseline is not same everywhere right and then uh, we have seen the uh, importance and what kind of an outcome uh, we can get by replacing old motors by energy efficient motors so friend, this is not just the uh, some eight nine technologies Th these are plenty of them but which one is applicable to a particular situation has to be evolved uh, properly <coughs> excuse me so this is a quick summary of uh, uh, the outcomes which we have uh, achieved uh, the technologies which we have implemented and uh, to summarize on the last slide right uh, basically everything comes down to cost analysis opportunity evaluation uh, system optimization and transfer the savings so the last point of transfer the savings this is very very important in any uh, energy efficiency project and we see to it that 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 is done okay so we will quickly go to the uh, questions now i request kunal to uh, take the questions yeah hello by sharing yeah, yeah. Sure. So, uh, for our first question is, uh, what is the difference uh, between uh, this uh, predictive and uh, performance-based maintenance plan? Sure. Um, you said corrective or predictive? No, uh, predictive and performance-based. See, in case of predictive, what happens is there are a lot of uh, uh, iot based technologies which have come up right which measure one particular parameter right and then based on that particular parameter uh, it will give you a signal that a correction is needed right so you don't have to do a manual monitoring right it is good to do that right but what happens is none of a single parameter is a direct indicative of your energy saving right energy saving is outcome of so many parameters energy saving is is a diagnosis right so that diagnosis level, right, you cannot achieve it simply by doing a predictive uh, maintenance, right? Here, your performance-based maintenance is what matters. So in case of children, <clears throat> how will be the performance-based measurement? Uh, will be overall per day unit consumption, right? It, it will be a condenser approach, right? It would be percent loading. It would be um, KW per TR. It can be anything, right? So what happens is uh, we have to establish these processes, right, which O&M team follows, right. And some of these things cannot be done at every shift. Some of these things cannot be done every day, right. Some of these things cannot be done every week, right. But at least a month frequency should be there to to uh, do all the calculations, to do all the all the performance parameters, right, at place, right. And when you have that kind of a detailed summary in your um, front. You can very clearly uh, take the uh, take the uh, action which is needed uh, to enhance the savings. So that's how we call it as a performance based uh, O and M. Yeah. Next, please. Uh, yeah. So the next question is, uh, what intervention was done by CTEC in the uh, case study one, which is that HSG reduction? Okay. Okay. Um, See, what happens is uh, it, it's a hotel uh, facility, five-star hotel facility. In that hotel, uh, th there is a um, hot water generator, right, for uh, circulating hot water uh, requirement inside the uh, hotel, right? Now, how, how the uh, control functions uh, uh, in that? Uh, basically, uh, if the temperature drops, right, then your hot water generator starts firing. And then if the temperature is achieved, uh, your hot water generator uh, stops, right? 
now what happens is uh, your your from your firing section right your uh, air keeps uh, going up we observe that there is absolutely no consumption right then why is that the temperature is dropping right because there is a chimney through that there is a natural uh, circulation that is taking place right so uh, from your uh, hot flue gas path your cold air is getting in and that cold air is getting passed out right so it's a small automation project right wherein the air passage uh, is actually uh, started and stopped right it's a very small project right and there is absolutely no way you can quantify the savings right uh, and consider this as a fundamental energy saving project at your first stage right but the oil uh, team right can very well find out these kind of uh, small intervention and, and they can do it so this was one thing second thing was uh, that um, uh, we went ahead with uh, heat pump installation right so that that was the technology intervention right and then uh, once the the heat pump was installed the heat pump had its own uh, own uh, heat pump had its own set point and had its own philosophy of uh, controls right so over a period of time oil and team worked further on that and, and modified that uh, uh, control settings based on uh, different seasons based on different uh, uh, occupancy levels right so so that's how uh, those, those results were achieved right Friends, it's actually the LED project only which we have seen now. LED also, there is a, uh, I mean, um, uh, illumination level control, that kind of automation is possible. But in most of the technologies, right, even if it's an energy efficient technology, once you have installed it, but then how you are operating it, how you are maintaining it, that, that there is a phenomenal scope for, for, for maximizing the savings, right? That, that, that savings maximization can be of the order of, means whatever savings you are getting, you can maximize it at least by 3% to 10%. By the OM team. Uh, yeah. So the uh, next question is: uh, Do banks want any collateral for loans? Uh, is the new equipment hypothecated to them? See, definitely. Uh, when when we went ahead uh, for our energy performance contract, bank did ask for um, uh, a collateral, right? So that was our experience with SBI, and that was our experience with SIGBI, right? But but uh, luckily, uh, SIGBI understood energy efficiency much much better. So the quantum of collateral that was needed uh, with SIGB reduced phenomenally, right? See, with bank now, we do one fundamental mistake, right? I also feel that my uh, nearby bank should be my bank and my nearby bank should be my financer. Why? Right? Actually, we need to treat bank as a vendor, right? Like an equipment or technology vendor, right? And like customers or for technology, we go all across world, right? But for bank, we don't do that, right? Bank, we feel that, no, no, my bank should give that. Why? It doesn't, every bank or every branch behaves quite differently. Let, let me put it uh, on record, right? So so our our loan from a local CB branch was was refused twice, right? We were we were quite nervous and we, we uh, discussed uh, on forums, like what mistake is happening from our end. And we were told that, no, you go to this branch in this city. And luckily our project was in that city only, right? And it worked, right? So so that, but the, but the phenomenal gain we achieved was when we went to Tata Clean Tech. Right. And, and our qualification in terms of our project, our performance, our customer quality was so good that the, the data clean tech said, uh, uh, fine, we don't need any collateral. And, and in their normal financing process is also not fundamentally based on collateral. Right. And this I'm telling you all before uh, this uh, uh, schemes of PRGAP or uh, uh, PRSF schemes even started. Right. I'm telling you uh, even before that. Right, but 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 now what happens is uh, uh, how many escos and to what extent extent escos will keep on taking the burden of loans on their themselves, right? Most of these escos, including us, are MSME, right? So that limit of how much of finance you can take or how much of finance uh, you or we can take, which which uh, bank uh, is going to offer it to us, will get limited, right? So end of the day, right, the finance has to be taken by the customer. Customer's balance sheets are very, very strong, right? So we are working on that. And our all these programs, right, with, with positive cash flow base, right, our customers are going to take the loan. It, it is going to be on their books. Next, please. Uh, so uh, what additional projects have been implemented uh, to increase the savings uh, in the second year as compared to first? Yeah, good question. In that case, we uh, realized that uh, uh, humidity levels are high, right? And cooling tower was not uh, giving us adequate performance, right? 
so we were wondering what is to be done right we had done the cooling tower repair right uh, we have changed the fills right anything and everything that was possible to improve the performance of that particular cooling tower right we have done that right now we were thinking what to what to do right but in that particular case we realized or the ondm team was very confident that we need a cti approved cooling tower right and and the project period was only one year passed by and uh, uh, still uh, two and a half year for that particular project was remaining so even for the two and a half year uh, uh, of uh, payment available right with the increased or enhanced saving it was possible for us to get the return on that uh, project right so it, it was a CTI approved cooling tower, additional uh, capacity. We calculated how much would be needed, right? And, and uh, luckily space for, the, for, for installation was there, right? So we had installed that. See, this, was yeah. not, this would not have been possible if the ONM team would not have been there at the spot. So the next question is, uh, what percentage of project cost should be kept for the ONM? Uh, very nice. Very versus... great, question. great question. See, uh, I'll put uh, M and V and ONM in one uh, uh, category, right? And we keep we keep uh, at least at least uh, uh, fifteen to twenty percent uh, for ONM and and M and V. Here, here I am taking manpower cost. Here I am taking all the uh, IoT based uh, uh, applications which we have installed, right? For monitoring things and everything is possible in that fifteen to twenty percent case. So next is uh, do uh, OEMs uh, do equipment financing instead of banks? See why OEM? Uh, I mean um, uh, OEM will finance, right? If OEM had to finance, they would have financed it much before even ESCOs uh, have come into the picture, right? OEM existed, right? They exist as long uh, as the industry is in existence. It's the ESCO which is new, right? Oh, but it's not their job to finance. It's their job to manufacture, right? It's their job to make good equipment. Right, it's their job to make good technologies available. Right, it's their job to provide good services if there is any fault that is happening. Right, they they, they don't finance. So at least we have not seen any any case. And if they are financing, then then why will why will they require ESCO or why will customer require ESCO? Yes. Next, please. Yeah, uh, that's all uh, questions we have. Thank you. Thank you, Milan. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Kunal. Um, great friends, uh, we have come to closure of time also, uh, hardly one minute uh, is pending. So we thank you for uh, attending and uh, asking uh, very interesting and good questions, right? Uh, you can send questions or queries to us later on also, we will definitely get back to you, right? We have made our all knowledge available and open uh, for the use of industry. There is absolutely no problem, right? And uh, we, are, we are definitely going to give something good uh, to the industry. Uh, through these programs right we are solving the the problem of financing we are solving the risk of uh, outcomes uh, for the customer right and these two things if they are solved definitely uh, energy efficiency can be scaled up uh, we very strongly believe that thank you thank you very much and see you all next uh, uh, tuesday uh, same time thank you thank you very much